everyone, welcome back to the Stitches and Scribbles channel. My name is Erin and I'm back with another podcast episode today. I do actually have lots of stuff to show you. I have been really bouncing around different projects this week, so no finished objects, but I definitely started at least one, if not a couple more. Actually, no, I do have finished objects. Just so many things happening. Um, I really, the last couple weeks, have been making it a goal to really be ahead on Friday videos because I have a relative coming to stay with me towards the end of the month. I have some more Ren Faire trips planned. I'm like, weirdly enough, starting to like think about Halloween videos already, although I guess that's not that weird. You guys know that crafters have to be like months ahead of whatever's going on. Um, I've also started planning out some vlogmas things, so it's been a very, like, high production couple of weeks in terms of YouTube stuff. I also know that the start of the school year is coming, and even though right now I only have one sub day in my schedule for the fall, I know that, like, once the school year starts, I'll get requests coming in very quickly. So, yeah, it's been very busy. But that means that I've been working on a lot of stuff and yeah, let's just, let's just dive into it. So the first couple of things I have to show you are actually not knit or crochet related. Um, for my craft fair, I actually also do beaded or charm earrings. It's kind of like, I don't want to say it's a gimmick because that sounds bad, but I, earrings are really fast to make, right? They're also like not super high in terms of cost of materials, so they're a really good like low price point item for me to include in my shop. So I sell earrings for $5 a pair. I do make sure usually that I don't buy charms that will exceed that price. Actually, ideally, like if I'm looking at charms or beads for earrings, I want to make sure that I can get at least a couple of pairs out of the materials for less than five dollars if that makes sense. So if I'm looking at like a pack of charms that costs five dollars I want to make sure that I can get at least like three to five pairs of earrings out of it before I consider buying it. So I won't buy charms that like by themselves like an individual one is a couple dollars. I definitely like plan things out accordingly as you should if you're selling items. So they're kind of a great item because people will stop at my stand and either get a bunch of pair of earrings, which has happened quite a few times. Um, it's a lot of times like women who are looking for like coworker gifts or they're like, I'm going to buy one for like all my sisters, all of my like group of friends, something like that. I also get a lot of like younger women and girls. So like middle school to teenager age who will buy earrings because it's a five dollar purchase it's not a big expensive item um and they're just kind of a good way to get people to like actually stop and look at what else is on my table so if you're considering doing craft fairs as part of your like crafting journey I would recommend finding a similar item that can be your kind of um the item that like pulls people in and gets them to make a first purchase because it's definitely true the longer they stand in front of your table the more likely they are to buy things. But all of that being said, um, I did end up with some beads and charms that I wanted to show you. So the first little bag of items I actually ordered. So I got these because I had purchased a pair of earrings from a craft vendor at a market that I visited. It wasn't one that I was selling at. And she had these adorable little beer stein earrings. And as soon as I saw them, I knew like I could probably find the charms online if I wanted to and just make my own. But I also like if I'm going to do that, I want to support the person who was making them and made me see them as well. So I went ahead and bought a pair. It was the last pair that she had. She said that they sell out really quickly. Um, so I went ahead and bought them, wore them to the Milwaukee German Fest this year, loved them. Um, I might be incorporating them into a Ren Fair costume, but I'll, I'll get to Ren Fair stuff in a minute. That's its own, like, subcategory on this podcast at this point. 
But I did manage to find the charms on Amazon. Although, interestingly enough, because uh, my husband has, like, package alerts if they're coming through not Amazon, um, he got an alert that these were dropped off and it was listed as an Etsy package. So I'm wondering if these could also be found on Etsy as well. But they are, I got this little bag of them, they're tiny little beer steins, which if you don't know what that is, a beer stein is basically a very decorative beer drinking vessel. Um, they are usually made with ceramic, sometimes metal, um, sometimes even wood I've seen, but they usually have a lid and some sort of an ornate design on them. And these steins at like German cultural festivals can go up to like a thousand dollars in price. Some of them are really expensive, very customizable, very like heavy and ornate and just kind of their own like beautiful works of art. So that's why I was so excited when I saw the earrings because I actually can't drink beer because I'm gluten free. Um, but I've always loved the beer steins and how they look. So here's a close up of what the charm looks like. The top does open and then there's just a little loop on the side for you to attach it to an earring wire. Um, also when I wore them to German Fest and just out for the day where I saw a couple friends and then went to German Fest. Um, I had at least two people request a pair if I got my hands on the charms. So those two people will be getting pairs of earrings. This is probably not something I'm going to use for my shop because it was fairly expensive for a pack of charms. I think I figured out that it was still less than $5 in cost per pair if I wanted to sell them but these are very very cool and uh, I don't know maybe I'll put like one pair in my shop and see like how quickly they go but these are kind of a special item I'd kind of prefer to like hang on to them and not oversell them um, especially since I know there's another vendor like kind of in the area who also sells them so that might be a just for me project or like for friends and family things like that but I was so excited about these beads they're just super fun um so yeah that was those and then at my last craft fair well two two craft fairs ago I have a regular customer who came up to me and said hi like she always does um, last year she bought like a bunch of my mushroom stuff. She I think bought at least one pair of mushroom earrings if not multiples um, and she likes my painted rocks as well. But she came up to me two weeks ago and said that she tried to get into jewelry making at one point in time and it kind of fell through. She wasn't as interested um, and she had a bag of beads that she wanted to gift to me which is totally unexpected but very very exciting when customers do that. It's happened to me a couple times where people have said like I have craft supplies that I am no longer interested in storing in my house. Would you like them? And my answer is always yes even if I can't use it for items I'm going to sell. I probably know a way that I could use it or someone else who could use it and I, that's usually how I phrase it to people of if, if I can't use it I will find a use for it if that is something you're comfortable with. So she gifted me this bag of beads um, and she told me last week that these are all handmade ceramic beads. So I just wanted to show you some of the strands that are in here. Um, we've got these lovely ones. I'll have to show each one like really close up to camera. They're like mostly a very light like between a mint green and a lime green color with some like turquoise and deep blues in those little ridges and then the brown spacer beads so those are lovely then the next strand I think there's actually a couple of this one yeah here's a, a little shorty one I'll hold up this one to camera but it's these chunky pink and green beads again with some little spacers in them and they've got like a texture to them 
Those are also beautiful. There's these ones that are kind of giving me like coral vibes even though like they're not coral in color. I mean like actual like under the sea coral just because of the textures and the like browns and like tealy colors reminds me of like something underwater. So the next one. These ones were actually my favorites when I saw them. They're these bright turquoise and orange like they remind me of clownfish almost with the the way the like pattern is on there just kind of like little blotchy designs but I loved the vibrant teal and orange then we've got some black and white these ones look like stone to me but they are ceramic because I can see on the inside of the beads that like it still looks like clay but some lovely black and white beads and a different set of black and white beads. These ones, the whites have like little petals almost painted on them. Very pretty. We've got another like green brown design. This one has like orange and yellow splotches on it. And these ones are actually very similar to the orange and turquoise ones, but they're a very pale blue and yellow with that kind of like splotchy design. So those are all the stranded ones. There's a couple, there's some beads that are just loose in the bottom here, so I'll try to show those. There's some that are like this that are kind of like tiger's eye looking colors and textured on the sides. There's these ones that are cream with like orange and black splotches and these remind me of koi fish just because of the colors. And then there's also some big chunky ones. Looks like there's some solid wood beads floating in there. But then there's also big pink and light blue just round beads. Looks like there's a couple other colors of those big round ones. So there's a mint and a lavender and like more of a lime green color for those guys. But yeah, it was super exciting to be gifted a bunch of beads. Oh, stuck in my hair. Um, these, I think I do want to make some items for myself out of them because I love all the colors and how vibrant they are but I also will probably be making some to sell because some of those bead strands are quite long I could get quite a few pairs of earrings out of them um, but I also do want to make a couple of items for myself especially with those orange and teal I didn't think that would be a color scheme that I'd be really drawn to I'm usually a, like greens earth tones and like dark neutrals or dark jewel tones kind of person um but I really like those orange and teal so I'll just have to make something out of them I don't do a lot of orange unless it's like the burnt orange kind of fall color but like really vibrant orange is not something that I typically do but anyway that was all of the like beading stuff Let's look at a couple of finished objects and these will actually be making an appearance on my channel in a Friday video because I am releasing a pattern at the end of the month. It is for sure happening now. Um, and I wanted, this time when I released the pattern, I wanted there to be at least a partial tutorial to go with it. So basically the idea for this and I'm going to, I have another pattern in line after this that's going to work kind of the same way just to see how they do. But I know that my tutorials do really well on YouTube, but I also really want to sell patterns. And at least for me, if I find a tutorial on YouTube, I usually don't buy the pattern that goes with it. So just using myself as an example, I wanted to try to find something that would give people the tutorial that they want, but also not make the pattern redundant if that makes sense. So what I decided to do is actually make four very similar items that are all together in a pattern pack 
and only show one design as a tutorial on YouTube. And because of the nature of this design and the other one, if you're an advanced crocheter, you'll probably be able to figure out the steps I did to make the other versions, but that's okay. It's kind of a test just to see how it goes. And because they're pretty simple items, I didn't need pattern testers. That also means that the pattern is gonna be pretty low in price, um, even though it's like a four in one pattern. But this is the version that you will see on YouTube at the end of the month. It's supposed to come out August 25th, which I believe is the last Friday in August. But it is actually a water bottle purse. So I sized this to fit um, actually a travel mug and not a water bottle, but it seemed like a size that would fit most 16 to 20 ounce water bottles. And you can obviously adjust the height. I'm going to include directions on how to adjust the size of the base of the bag. Um, but a pretty simple pattern, but I really like these um, for carrying drinks around. So the version you will get on YouTube is a plain double crochet version, and it kind of is more to talk about the shaping and some of the methods that I used to create this. But if you purchase the pattern when it's out, you will get three more stitch pattern designs with it. So the first one is a mesh version. So I like, would like this if you had a really cute, colorful water bottle that you wanted to show through the bag. I also have a lemon peel stitch version. So it gives it more of a like woven, almost macrame look that could also just be the color I used. And if this one looks a little bit stretched out, it's because it actually has been used already. Um, and this is the one that I'm going to keep in my personal collection and not sell in my shop because I like this one the best. And then the last one is this cluster stitch. It's kind of granny stitch looking, but not exactly. It's a, definitely a cluster stitch, not a granny. So those are my four finished items for the week because I was really trying to plug out that pattern last week and get the tutorial filmed. So all I have left to do for the pattern is to make a couple more notes. Um, this is the, the stitch version that I created the most recently, so I kind of need to go back into that version of the pattern and tweak a couple things just to make sure that the language in the pattern is really clear. Um, but And then do some photos and stuff, but otherwise that pattern is pretty much ready to go, which is exciting for me to be that ahead <laughs> on something like that. And then that will allow me to start the next pattern that I have in line, which is going to be a very similar format, where on YouTube you will get one version of the pattern as a complete tutorial. And then if you purchase the pattern, you'll get the written directions for the tutorial version and also three other variations of the same item. So that was Finished objects and also kind of an update rolled into one there. Um, what should we do next? I do have a lot of whips, but I feel like I want to talk about Renfair things next. So you will get one Renfair Get Ready With Me video this week that you're watching this. Yeah, it comes out on Friday. And another Renfair DIY the following Friday. But I have two more Renfair trips planned as I've been saying for a couple weeks now. One of them I have a costume for. Most of the pieces are done. I'm going to film another get ready with me as I do kind of the last minute DIYs for that costume. But I have a third run fair trip and I was kind of debating what costume I wanted to do for that trip because I don't want to repeat <laughs> one of the other two that I've done. Like I want to get a third costume run out of it. So I was debating three ideas and it, I was considering posting it as like a poll here on YouTube and on Instagram to like let people vote for what they wanted to see. But I think I'm so strongly leaning in one direction now that I might not do that and just make the decision on my own. But I'll go ahead and share all three ideas with you guys. So the first idea I thought of, which was partially just because it was the easiest, was doing a pirate costume. I've done pirate themed things in the past. I have all the base pieces for it, but I also kind of want to do pirates for Halloween. So in that regard, it would save me some effort later for Halloween to do pirates now, 
because I could just rewear the costume, but also that kind of takes away some of the like Halloween content that I maybe had planned of like updating my pirate costume and stuff like that. So because I think I have the time to pull off a, a new-ish costume, it's going to be mostly like old pieces that I have in my collection, but because I have the time to put together a third costume, I'm kind of nixing that idea entirely, but you'll see it for Halloween. The second idea I had was to do something with the fairy wings that are sitting behind me because I have not worn them for a costume yet. They have kind of just been a decoration piece here in my office. And I'm not opposed to them staying like that. I actually almost wore them with my mushroom costume that I've been working on for a while, but I think I need to redo the straps so that they don't move around as much. I found that the wings were like spinning on my back and I wasn't nuts about that. So I need to change something about how the straps are attached in order to fix that problem before I can wear it. So with that costume, I could rewear the crochet bodice that I have already made, not the one for the mushroom costume that I made this year, but one I made actually, I think two years ago at this point. It's kind of like beige with some other colors running through it. Um, and do kind of just a crochet fairy costume. I could rewear the hat I made for my mushroom costume and just change out the hat band. Um, I kind of have all of the pieces for it otherwise, but that didn't seem like a very exciting costume to me. Like, very cute. We'll definitely probably wear it next year for Ren Faire. Um, and maybe tweak some of the items a little bit to like get some more video stuff out of it but I wasn't like loving that idea right now which kind of makes me sad because that means that I probably won't wear my fairy wings this year to the renaissance fair but I'm also okay with that. The third idea I had is the one that I'm kind of like gravitating towards now and if you even like know what I'm talking about in the comments like feel free to chime in and tell me you're excited about this too. I don't know. Like, just let me know I'm not crazy, I guess is what I'm going for. But I read a book this year that I absolutely fell in love with. It has now made me want to purchase every book that this author has written, which um, would be quite a financial commitment. And the book was called Tress of the Emerald Sea, which is by Brandon Sanderson. I know he's a really big fantasy author, but I did not know about him until earlier this year. And Tress of the Emerald Sea in the like articles and like posts I read about it online kind of said that it was an introduction to this fantasy world that Brandon Sanderson had already created but it was a standalone novel so it didn't quite have the like commitment to reading a whole series or a whole trilogy that some of his other books do. It was meant to be kind of a standalone book but also like an entry point into this fantasy world if you were not already familiar with it. The other way it was described to me was if you liked the vibes of the Princess Bride movie but weren't satisfied by the ending, this is the book for you. Which is very much like how I felt about that movie. Like I get why people like it, it just felt kind of boring <laughs> to me. So this is like a more exciting version of that. Like similar vibes but more adventure, more character development, um, all that good stuff. I've been describing it to people as if you combined The Princess Bride with the Disney movie Treasure Planet. That's kind of the like the vibe it gives. So I've been thinking about dressing up as the main character Tress for the Renaissance Fair. And this like has a couple reasons behind it. First of all, it's not a Renaissance era book by any means. It's very much like right on the border between sci-fi and fantasy. It has elements of both. But the descriptions and kind of some of the images that are in the book make it like Ren Faire adjacent. As we know, like the Renaissance Fair is not known for being historically accurate anymore. It's more of a like fantasy medieval vibes kind of situation 
but I think that this costume would fit really well in that environment. So I'm debating making a tress costume out of pieces I already have with some small DIYs to go with it. Um, part of the story is that she has a talking rat that follows her around, so it would mean an amigurumi project to have yet another shoulder friend for the Renaissance Fair. I seem to keep making little characters that like sit on my shoulder as part of my costumes, so it would include another one of those. It would um, mean making some like spores to go with the costume, which if you haven't read the book that's gonna sound really strange, but spores are a really big part of the storyline. Um, the book takes place on a planet that the oceans are not made of water, they're made of spores, and each ocean is a different color spore and they do different things. So very inventive like concept there of that there are these ships sailing across oceans of spores instead of the water and it's just very like magical and spooky and also has like the like other world planet vibes um but Tress works with the spores in parts of the story so I will need something to represent that and otherwise her costume from the like one image that's in the book is not that complex. I think that some of the Ren Fair pieces I already have would work for it. So I think that would be a good one to do. I've also not seen anyone else like cosplay as her yet. So I don't know. It would be cool to like be one of the first people to do that. I'm sure people have done it already because the book's been out. I don't know if it's like brand new or if it's been out for like a year at this point but it's fairly recent so I think that would be a good opportunity to like do an actual cosplay at the renaissance fair instead of just a costume of my own design so let me know what you think in the comments <laughs> if that sounds like a good idea or not um at the very least it's going to be another like crochet DIY heavy vlog um to show you how I get ready with that costume so I'll end the Ren Fair talk here for now. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around if you're still here. Let's dive into my current whips. So one of the ones that I showed last week was the pair of socks that I started. This is where I'm at with the first sock. All I have left to do is the toe. Um, considering that at the last week, this is where I was, I did not actually do a ton here. I kind of just knit the foot. But I kept holding off on doing the toe because I knew, I knew that I needed the tutorial video for it and just kind of never got around to it. But then for some reason I started new projects instead of finishing that one. So that might be my goal for this afternoon is to actually knit the toe on that sock and start the second one so that I can have a finished pair of socks again pretty soon. But the project that I started this week is a crescent shaped shawl and if this yarn looks familiar I got it on clearance from Hobby Lobby a few weeks ago it was from their hand dyed yarn collection this is what it looks like caked up it's like teal burgundy and like a goldenrod color but I am following a lace crescent shawl tutorial that I found on YouTube and just interspersing it with sections of garter stitch to kind of give myself a break from the lace pattern. But this was a free, not a free pattern, but a, a tutorial on YouTube that I'm following. So let's see if I can get a better close up of what the lace looks like. This is a really simple lace pattern. It's just a two row repeat because of the shaping of the shawl. And it'll be that like crescent moon shape it looks really funky right now because it will definitely need to be blocked when it's done the way that the designer in the tutorial did the edge like the edge feels kind of tight right now because it includes like a shelvage at the end which basically means that you're like slipping stitches and only knitting them every other row which does give you a nice like clean edge but it also means that this feels a lot tighter than the stitches underneath it. So 
will definitely take some blocking. I have three skeins of this yarn and I do plan on using all three for this project um, just to get it out of my stash and also because I would like this to be a very big shawl that I can like wrap and do fun things with. So yeah, this was the project I started when I didn't feel like knitting the toe on my socks. This also required a video tutorial, so I'm not sure how that was better than just watching the, the toe tutorial for the socks, but that was just where my brain was and I decided to just go with it because there was no point in fighting it. I have definitely found that when I really want to start a new project, I end up just kind of going for it. That's just how it is. Um, what else have I got here? I worked some more on my shawl that I've been doing while reading. So it's still on the increase section. That little pearl marker is where I left off last week. I did start a new stripe from last week that is mostly the lime green. And I actually started a second one that you can't see very well. So it went from the like lime green and purple to lime green and one strand of gray. But they look almost identical when they're up next to each other. I'm sure it'll be a little clearer when I have a few more rows of the gray. But this is what the yarn cake looks like at this point. Um, I'm getting close to the point where I'm going to start decreasing instead of increasing. The goal for this one was to have like a triangle shawl that like has a point that would rest like on your back if you're wearing this like a traditional shawl and then the stripes would be vertical along that shawl pattern. I hope that made sense. It'll probably make more sense when it gets a little further in progress but that's what I've been working on for the most part while I've been reading. Um, I am still enjoying reading my ebooks while knitting that even despite how busy I was last week with video stuff, that became my like calm down activity after doing a video. Because even though like my videos are craft projects, right? So it's not like I'm doing any like big strenuous activity or something super stressful. But it is still a lot of like decision making going on, which um, I in the past, especially while I was teaching, definitely got to points of burnout because of decision fatigue. I was just tired of all of the like micro decisions and with teaching it also came with the um, added pressure of being told that I was making the wrong decisions. <laughs> so I definitely, as much as I can, try to build breaks in for myself. Not necessarily where like I'm doing nothing because that doesn't work for me either. I just end up like thinking about things and fixating on other stuff. But with reading and knitting I have found that that is something that is very relaxing to me because my hands are busy, my brain is busy like processing the words on the page um, and it's quiet so I'm not getting like the auditory overload. Again, not that I really am ever, because if I'm not subbing, I'm working from home, so it is pretty quiet unless I'm listening to something. But it has just been a good, like, reset time for me, if that makes sense. So I'm not super concerned about, like, rushing through this project to, like, get it done for any purpose. Like, its purpose was to be a project I could do while reading. That's what it exists for, and I'm happy with that. But on that same note... I actually started working on my birthday scarf again, which if you've been on my channel for a while, you'll know I started this in February, which is my actual birthday month. Um, and it's just been a very slow project because for a while it was my designated road trip project. Um, but now that I'm doing the knitting and reading thing, I pulled it back out because it's also a project I can do while reading. So... This little skull marker, I actually just pulled it out yesterday, so this was all yesterday. Some of that was during reading time, some of that was because I went to a friend's house to watch The Bachelorette. So a solid, like, here up was Bachelorette knitting, because that is a two-hour show. It's very long. Um, but <laughs> it has gotten quite long in general, 
and I had two skeins of this. I do not appear to have the yarn tags in here anymore. Oh, I do actually. This is Earth Yarns Unique Fingering in color 3012, so no color name, but here's the tag. I got this from um, Seven Sisters Yarn and Fiber in St. Louis. This is all the yarn I have left, so it's a pretty small little donut at this point. Um, so I should finish this pretty soon, especially if I'm reading and knitting with this one. Um, and I already have another like similar scarf ready to go for when I finish this one. So yeah, I've just really been enjoying the like reading and knitting vibes. I would love to try to tackle a knit sweater or like a bigger piece while reading, but I haven't found a pattern that I'm particularly drawn to yet that I want to make. Um, I do want to make a couple of cardigans because I have a couple sweater quantities of yarn in my stash that I would like to use, but um, I can't crochet and read at the same time, so that'll have to be a separate project. I think one of them I want to maybe do is a Vlogmas project because I have a deep like maroon red that would be really pretty to then wear on Christmas as part of my ensemble but that is really thinking far ahead so clearly I'm at the point of the video where I have lost the train of thought that I wanted to cover but I think I have shown you everything and talked about all the things that I had planned on talking about so we're just gonna call it quits at this point Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in following me on other forms of social media, that information will be in the description box below. I'm also now trying to post some kind of previews on Instagram of whatever I am posting here on YouTube. So if you want some sneak peeks of upcoming videos, that would definitely be the place to look. I've also been really active on TikTok. I've been posting my um, crochet beginner series there as well. And I am actually also on Lemonade. That is not in the description box at the moment, but if you are a Lemonade person, let me know and I'd be happy to send you the information. Um, there seems to be not a lot of crafty content on there, so I'm trying to change that with my one little account. Um, but yeah, that information is down below. It would really help me out if you liked this video, left a comment, um, and subscribe to my channel so that you can be notified of all of my future crafty content. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.